Dear friends, uh, the great uh, popular movements for freedom, uh, democracy, and human rights ongoing in the Northern Africa and the Middle East will change not only those countries, but also the whole world in the near future. We, walk, we talk about the possibility of uh, establish, establishing a security and ensuring peace system widely based on what we call soft power. The 20th century first uh, half was marked by two world wars that caused the greatest human and material losses in the humankind history. We must not forget that they were triggered by totalitarian regimes. The first one by an absolute monarchy, the second by a Nazi dictatorship. The second half of the 20th century passed through a Cold War that opposed Western democracies, the Soviet Communist Empire, the most criminal regime in history. Global peace was preserved due to a balance of forces based on the nuclear threat that might have destroyed not only the parties involved in the conflict of any time, but the entire world. The last decade of the 20th century has radically changed the situation, but not because of the use of military force or even due to the economic strength. Decisive was the determination of crowds of people from the former communist countries of Central and Eastern Europe, who believed in ideals of freedom, democracy, and human rights, and who were ready to fight and to die for them. The Soviet empire collapsed, confronted to a peaceful movement, except Romania's tragic situation, where freedom was a price paid by over 1,000 1, dead, more 3,000 seriously injured, and more 6,000 people arrested and tortured in six days. I um, now the opportunity, and uh, I thank the Freedom Forum for it, to express on behalf of myself and uh, of the young Romanians who 20 years ago confronted empty-handed the army and security forces of Ceausescu dictatorship, our homage to the fighters for human rights in Northern Africa, in the Middle East, as well as around the world, now present in Oslo or away from us. Until uh, the last moment of our life, we will feel solidarity with those who are carrying on this fight. It is a supreme duty towards our own martyrs who died fighting for freedom and democracy. One uh, can um, understand the um, changing in the security environment only if we take into account the change in the nature of international relations, on rules, of standards, of actors typology, of goals, and of mechanism of action. In a unimultipolar world with an anarchic periphery like the one nowadays, a superpower like the United States of America cannot ensure global peace just by itself. The entire Western world new is new, multipolar, and univocal. The Western multipolarism is generated by the internal democracy and by the one existing at the level of the international bodies it has created. At the same time, 
if the inclusion in Western security alliances depended upon fulfilling some democratic standards, we cannot leave out a reality. In uh, many times, in the name of global peace and security, were accepted relationships with dictatorship or totalitarian regimes applying abusive behavior to their citizens. Furthermore, sometimes there was a tendency to consider more reliable leaders of totalitarian regimes than representative of democratic opposition or of the civil society. But if on the short term such an approach may generate some results, on long term only democratic societies can ensure global peace and security. Conflict prevention and post-conflict situation management require a comprehensive and balanced view which ought to consider the interest of various ethnic and religious community, the state's, state's duties and their citizens' natural rights, as, is, as well as regional actors' circumstantial and long-term interest. It cannot be developed without the involvement of representatives capable to express the plurality of voices, questions and aspirations of billions of people. This is the basis of a new type of diplomacy, the cultural diplomacy, based on knowing the other. Misunderstanding the other's motivation has led to many wrong decisions in the foreign policy history which caused conflicts and wars. From ancient times to our days, international politics and diplomacy have been developed based on power and strength relationships. The soft power concept is far from being functional and uh, cultural diplomacy is just at its beginning. Uh, I would like to be uh, well understood. I am not pleading for replacing the classical diplomacy with cultural one. It would mean that I would support a dangerous utopia. However, I stand up for associating them. Great powers and international organizations try to create a political culture of security through negotiation and cooperation. In order to promote peace and understanding in the world, we are looking for the lowest common denominator around which we can agree. This is based on common interest. If 20 years ago, people in Eastern Europe were willing to fight and die for freedom and democracy. And nowadays, just under our eyes, they prove the same determination in other parts of the world. I think we can see not only common interest, but also common ideals. I think we can hope to even more. We can achieve true peace and understanding by focusing not on the lowest common denominator, but taking as reference the highest common denominator. In this new century of millennium, we can rediscover the faith, not in order to use it against others, as it happened for a long time during the humankind history, but in order to understand our mission on Earth. People's arrogance made him forget the message of God. Forget that no matter whether we are believers of Christians, Muslim, Hebrew, 
or of Asian religions, and whatever the name we give him in our language, peace is the name of God. Thanks.